In this example, we want to find some population parameters. So let's assume we have taken some measurements of, let's say, a biomarker. Here are our data. They are in milligram per milliliter or milligram, milligram per liter or milligram uh, decimeter to the minus three. And we want to find out what are actually the parameters of our measurements. So we want to calculate the mean, the variance, the standard deviation, and also whether the data are in any way skewed. Uh, so uh, how can we do that? So for the mean, we can easily use uh, the equation for the mean. So here we've got the mean. We just simply add up all our observations, and I call the observation xi, and divide it by the number of observations that we have. For the variance of our data, of what we observe, we will take the sum of the difference between the observation and the mean. And since we are looking at our data only, we don't want to make an estimate for uh, the population from which these numbers are taken. We just want to know what is the variance of our observations. We divide by n. And the standard deviation then would just simply be the square root of this term here of the sum between the observations and it should add a squared here because it's the squared minus mu squared divided by n. For the students, this is a little bit more complicated and we just simply let Excel do all the hard work. So we can easily do that here in Excel. Um, we can count the data, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And we can calculate the mean with equals the mean. And we start typing equals the mean and highlight the cells, close the bracket, and get a mean of 16.61. For the variance, we can also do that quite easily. We type variance, and we get two variances. Now, variance p, that indicates that this here is basically what we want to find the variance from. And that follows this equation here, where we divide by n. Variance s would be when we estimate the variance of the population, where we divide by n minus 1. But this is not what we want, so we choose variance p. And again, highlight the cells, close the bracket and get the variance of 1.59. For the standard deviation, we can do the same thing. We type standard deviation and we find, again, standard deviation we've got down here with a P and an S. Again, we want the P here. Uh, highlight the cells, close the bracket. And that gives us basically the square root of this value here. The skewness tells us how skewed the data are. And we can, uh, again, do that very easily. We want skew p, because that is our population, that in a way. And we do the same thing. Highlight the cells and get a skewness of 0.17. And as a reminder, when we look at a distribution of some data and we find, for example, something like that, then this tail would point towards the right hand side. So it would be right skewed, right skewed, 
Likewise, if we've got a distribution like this, this would be left skewed, left skewed. Uh, in our case, we really don't have a massive skew, so we probably see something like that. Uh, we don't really have a, a big uh, skew in it and uh, values uh, smaller than one and uh, larger than minus one are usually uh, considered as not skewed distribution. And um, to be perfectly honest, this also, the skewness gives us a very important information about our distribution, because very often we find that uh, a distribution that is not skewed or not strongly skewed, not strongly skewed, that these populations are more likely to be normal distributed, or they come from a population that is normal distributed. So this is how we can calculate these uh, key parameters for our observations. I hope this makes sense and thank you very much for watching.